Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're working our way through Lenovo's ThinkBook line and today we got in the 13S G2. This is the Intel version of this sub notebook and it's running with an i5 processor and a really nice 13 inch display. And we're going to take a closer look at what this laptop is all about in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from Lenovo. So when we're done with this, it goes back to their mothership. All of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this laptop is all about. Now the price point for the one that we're looking at today can be as much as about $1,500. Uh, but they're having a sale on their website at this very moment, at least this morning as I'm recording this. And it looks like this model as configured is being sold for $745, which I think is a tremendous deal if you're looking for a new laptop. Uh, stick around for the review, of course, but I do think uh, what they're pricing this at for its sale price is almost unbeatable. So I would definitely check it out if you are in the market. Now this is a 13.6 inch laptop. It's running with a WQXGA display here, which means it's at 2560 by 1600. Uh, this is a 16 by 10 display, which means that you get a little bit more height to the display uh, versus a 1080p laptop. And this is really useful for document editing and web browsing and that sort of thing. Uh, 300 nits of brightness, not great, but definitely adequate. And it also has a Dolby Vision HDR mode that will work with Netflix and Disney Plus and some other apps that support that. Now the display hinge has a good amount of range to it. It will sit flat on your desk. Uh, this model has a touch display, so you could do some tablet-like functions when you have it in this particular configuration. Uh, just note though that this is not a yoga device, uh, which is Lenovo's two-in-one line. So this will not flip around and turn into a tablet. You can get the display out to here, but that's about it. Now inside, this has an i5-1135 G7 processor from Intel. That's an 11th generation chip. It is performing exceptionally well in this laptop, as you'll see in a few minutes when we get into some of our performance examples. There's also an i7 version that I think would perform even better. So depending on your budget, uh, maybe go for the i7, especially if you wanna play some games on it. But I was very pleased with what I got out of the i5. Uh, this model has 16 gigabytes of RAM on board. It is soldered on, you cannot upgrade the RAM. Uh, but it is running in dual channel configuration and the eight gigabyte model is also running in that same configuration. And that's important for getting the most performance out of the processor. So it's really, again, well tuned here, even though you can't upgrade the RAM. Uh, this model has a 256 gigabyte solid state drive installed. That's an NVMe SSD. You can upgrade that. Uh, so you can swap that out for a larger one later if you want. Uh, also, it has Wi-Fi 6 on board. It looks like an Intel radio that handles its Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and that is also upgradable. The build quality is very nice on this. It's all metal. It's not that heavy, just under 3 pounds, 2.78 pounds to be exact, or 1.2 kilograms. So it won't weight you down all that much. It really feels like a nice premium device here. Now, your keyboard is your standard Lenovo keyboard. Uh, really nicely spaced keys. It is backlit. What's nice is that they found something that works and they haven't been messing with it too much over the years. So if you like the way these keyboards look and feel, you'll be quite happy with it. Uh, travel isn't bad on it either. Again, just a very comfortable keyboard. You have a fingerprint reader up here for accessing the machine without your password. And you've got a very nice responsive trackpad here at the bottom uh, that is working very, very well. So very good input on this device. As for ports, we have a single Thunderbolt 4 port here on the left-hand side. Uh, this will also, of course, support USB 4. And this is a full service port, so you can plug in your power, your displays, and your data devices. So if you have one of those docking stations, you can do everything through a single port here. It comes with a 65-watt power adapter, but any 60-watt uh, power delivery dock should be fine for this one. You have an HDMI 2.0 output here, so you can output to a 4K 60 hertz display through this or through uh, this port. In fact, you can do both at the same time if you want. And then you also have a headphone microphone jack here. On the other side, we have two full-size USB uh, 3.0 ports. So you have uh, some standard USB. This one is always on, so if you wanna charge your phone or something through the laptop, even when it's off, you can use the port for that. 
and then you've got a Kensington lock over here. Now it has a 720p webcam here at the top, and like many Lenovo laptops, it has a physical shutter on it. So when you flick the switch over here, a little red dot will be put in front of the lens. It also disables the camera. And then if you want to re-enable it, of course, just slide it back over again. At 720p, it doesn't look spectacular. I'm hoping that we'll see maybe some better quality webcams in the next year or so, but it is adequate enough for doing web conferences and that sort of thing. The speakers are downward firing here at the bottom. They are quite loud, so the volume is definitely there. The range of sound is not great, uh, partly because this is a very small space to work with, so you won't get a lot of deep bass but I think it's going to be great for web conferences and things, and you can certainly hear quite clearly out of this. But for music, I would suggest using Bluetooth headphones or plugging in a pair of headphones to its headphone jack. Now, battery life on this is pretty good. They did put in a larger battery on this version of the hardware versus the prior generation. I'm looking at about 10 to 11 hours of battery life out of this, provided you stick to the basics like web browsing, word processing, maybe some video watching, and you keep the display brightness down a bit. Uh, if you're doing that, I think you'll get close to the mark. Uh, you'll see less battery life, though, of course, if you're playing games or really stressing the hardware. Uh, but altogether, I think uh, very good battery life here uh, for what you're getting. So let's take a look now and see how it performs. We'll begin with some of the basics here, some web browsing, and work our way up from there. Uh, we'll take a look at Chrome and load up the nasa.gov homepage. Uh, we are running this on my Wi-Fi 6 network. Uh, but this gives you a good sense as to how quickly it can render in pages. So all in, a very nice experience here. And of course, I can use the touch display if I want to browse the web. And I like having that additional height to the screen. A little bit earlier, we tested out my 1080p 60 frames per second YouTube video. We had one drop frame right when it started up. But after that, it was smooth sailing. No problems keeping up with that. And everything looked great on this display. And again, if you have apps that support Dolby Vision, you will get some degree of high dynamic range on the display as well. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 160, and that puts this right within the margin of error of what I would expect out of this particular processor. So a little lower than the i7 that we see above it, but generally a very good performer for doing the basics. So let's take a look and see how games run on this laptop. Now note that this laptop has the i5 1135G7 processor. That has the Intel XE graphics. Not all of the configurations will have the XE graphics. So you're gonna to want to see that the chip on the one you're buying has a G7 at the end of it, either the i7 or the i5 version. And for an i5, this is actually running very well. I can't get my frames per second counter up here, but at 720p at the absolute lowest settings, it looks to me like it's running at least uh, 30 frames per second, if not a little bit more. It is extremely playable. It looks spectacular. My Bluetooth controller works with it, no problem. And it's actually hard to believe that this is only 720p because it looks that good and plays pretty nicely too. I don't think you'll be able to bump this game up any higher than that. Uh, but again, it looks great. It does appear, though, that it is stretching out the display a little bit to fit the image in the screen because we should, at 720p, uh, see some black bars top and bottom, but here it is filling the screen. So we'll have to make some more adjustments probably somewhere to fix that. Uh, but really, it's running pretty nicely here out of a laptop with no onboard GPU. And a little bit earlier, Jake ran a few other games on the laptop. This is Fortnite running at the lowest settings at uh, 2560 by 1600, that is the native resolution of the display. And as you can see, we're running between 45 and 60 frames per second, depending on where he is in the game. Uh, so I think you could certainly tweak this to get a solid 60 out of it. Again, really good performance for a computer without a discrete GPU. And we also tried out GTA 5, and this was at 1080p at the lowest settings. Again, it stretched out the image a bit. Uh, here we were getting north of 40 frames per second most of the time. It seemed to be running really nicely. And of course, you could probably squeeze a little bit more performance out if you turn it down to 720p. Uh, so altogether, great gaming performance out of this laptop. And on the 3D Mark Times by Benchmark test, we got a score of 1,517. This is a great score for an i5 processor. And this one actually held its own against some of the i7s we've looked at recently. 
As you can see, it's not going to be as fast graphically as the XPS 13 from Dell with the i7 variant of this 11th generation chip, but you could easily configure this computer with one. And I was very surprised by the CPU score that we got because it was so much higher than what I've seen on other laptops I've looked at recently. We actually ran the test a couple of times just to make sure we were getting the right result, and we were. So again, the performance here is great, and I would love to see what the i7 version of this machine can do. And on the 3D Mark stress test, we got a passing grade of 98.9%. That's great to see on a small laptop like this, because a lot of times these smaller devices have a hard time keeping themselves cool. The trade-off, of course, is fan noise, and I do hear the fan kicking on pretty frequently on this one. It's not all that loud, but when you're playing a game, it will run at a higher rate, and it's something you're going to hear if you're sensitive to it. You can, of course, turn some of the performance settings down to keep the fan noise at a minimum, but it is a necessary evil on these Intel-based devices. We also booted up Ubuntu. This is 21.04 and most of the system here seemed to work. So Wi-Fi and Bluetooth were detected without issue. The video was detected properly. It also was able to pick up my touch display here. I guess uh, Firefox has like some weirdness going on in this current version of Ubuntu, but as you can see here, the touch display is working. Uh, one thing though that is not working properly is audio. So it detects an audio system, a Tiger Lake one from the Intel processor, but nothing is coming out of the speakers and I just get noise when I plug headphones into the headphone jack. So the audio here, at least on initial detection, wasn't working right. You'll have to find some means of getting that to work. But Ubuntu here feels to be performing quite well, uh, just as well as it performed under Windows. So altogether, a really nice little laptop here, a little gotcha on the uh, Linux compatibility, but beyond that, it's a very nice Windows laptop, very well built fantastic performance, good battery life, and I think priced quite reasonably for what it is. And again, just make note of the performance we're getting out of this configuration because they do sell a version with a lower powered i5 processor that won't get you the gaming performance you saw here. That's gonna do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Jim Callagher, Hot Sauce and Video Games, and Brian Parker. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.